Now, my question is, is it possible that perhaps you have overprojected too many foreign graduates until we have struggled to find jobs that are suitable for us? And, and is it also because of th their presence that our salaries, salaries get depressed? Another very, very important question. They're coming very early in the discussion. <laughs> very important question. Um, uh, let me uh, address your point um, uh, with a few dimensions. Uh, first, uh, fundamental, uh, we've got to be an economy that distinguishes itself by being relatively open to talent. If you look at us, uh, you know, man for man, woman for woman, compared to Mumbai or Shanghai or Tianjin or many other cities in Asia, or compared to leading Western cities, you know, it's not as if we are superior. We are hardworking, we are well trained, we are well educated, but we are not superior beings, right? And we have the some disadvantage of being only a city. We are a country that's only a city. Whereas these cities that we're competing with are drawing from a much larger hinterland of people where the best and the most enterprising tend to gravitate towards the, the, the key cities. And we are up against them. If we compete purely as Singaporeans, we'll be at a disadvantage because we are drawing only on our population. They are drawing on much larger populations. Second thing that happens if we compete is whether we have foreigners here with us or not, we're still competing with them. We're still competing with them. Most of our economy is part of a global market, apart from some domestic services. If you talk about even the retail sector, it can't survive or do well if it's just Singaporeans buying and shopping, right? Even the retail sector depends on tourists, the hotel sector, manufacturing almost entirely global, financial sector largely global. So most of our economy is about competition with others for a slice of the global market. So even if you don't have foreigners here with you, you're still competing with foreigners somewhere else. So the question then is, how do you strengthen the team in Singapore in a way that benefits Singaporeans? If you lock out foreigners, very hard to compete. We are, we are shooting ourselves in the foot. And the examples of societies are like that. Frankly, if you look at Taiwan today, it's a very interesting example. In fact, there was a study just done by East Asian Institute, EAI at NUS, looking at what's been happening in Taiwan as a result of net talent migration. They're very restrictive on inflow of talent, and they've been losing a lot of their own talent, very large numbers, mainly to China, but also to the US and elsewhere. So they have net talent outflow, and the result is quite stark. The average Taiwanese, and I'm not talking about the, the top chaps at all, you know, the average Taiwanese, the ordinary working Taiwanese, has seen nominal income completely flat for more than a decade, and in real terms, a significant decline. Quite a remarkable situation, very different from Singapore, different from many other societies, because they've locked out talent and they've lost their own. And you have to remember, Singaporeans want to work in competitive enterprises and they want to be part of competitive teams. The most enterprising and talented Singaporeans have choices. They have choices. A significant number of NUS grads are now working abroad. Many of the law grads are working in Hong Kong. They have choices. They're well-trained, well-educated, Singaporean at heart. But they want to do something that stretches themselves. They want to expand their boundaries. And there's nothing wrong in working abroad for some part of your career. And an increasing proportion of capable Singaporeans, especially the most capable, are trying out something abroad, working abroad, even starting businesses abroad. I just saw one example this afternoon, in fact. Because one of my staff showed me a, a iFlash drive. It's a flash drive that's to be used with the iPad. And interesting, it was a Singaporean whose company started this device called the iFlash drive that's now used with the, the, the iPad and the iPhone. Singaporean company, small enterprise. But he's actually based in the States, somewhere in Silicon Valley. 
young guy in fact. So this will happen. And if you don't provide opportunities in Singapore for enterprises to be global class and highly competitive, and for Singaporeans to work in the best teams, we will lose more of our Singaporeans, and it will be a Taiwan story. And I can think of many other examples like that. But we cannot leave it entirely to the market. We cannot just submerge ourselves in a global labour market and accept whoever comes. Because our objective is to improve opportunities for Singaporeans at the end of the day. That is our objective. So it's not a theological debate at the end of the day. It's a matter of degree and a matter of exactly how fast we move. We are slowing down the rate of inflow of foreigners. We are tightening requirements for employment passes. $1,500, you can't get an employment pass. You can't even get an S-pass, right? So I'm not sure about the example you gave. I'd be very happy to look at it. But you can't <laughs> get an S-pass or an employment pass. In fact, starting from January this year, we raised it even further so that we make sure that employment pass holders are competing on the same playing field or that Singaporeans are not, are not competing on an unlevel playing field compared to the foreigners. And we've got to keep doing that. Sometimes it's a little messy, some administrative measures. We've got to keep ensuring that whatever we do, bring in foreigners who can strengthen the team, but make sure that Singaporeans have opportunities. Our unemployment rate is very low. If you're talking about graduates, our unemployment rate is one of the lowest in Asia. In fact, probably the lowest, even compared to China. China booming, economy is booming, but significant graduate unemployment. In Taiwan, you've got a saying, I've forgotten what, how it reads in Mandarin, but if a signboard drops onto the street, it hits eight graduates. <laughs> I can't remember the Chinese saying, you know. And it's a popular lament about the fact that they have produced so many graduates, but opportunities hard to find. So let's do this in the right measure. Our objective is to serve the interests of Singaporeans, ensure there are competitive teams in Singapore that they can be part of. You asked Mr. Wong Leong, chairman of the NUS board, how is it that Venture Corp is globally competitive? Look at the composition of their workforce. They've got lots of Singaporeans, but also lots of foreigners. Ask him, will he be globally competitive if he relied only on Singaporeans? Look at his research engineers, look at his technicians, look at it up and down the line. His Singaporeans are doing very well. I happen to know Venture Corp. His Singaporeans are doing very well. Good jobs, good pay and going up over time. But because they are part of an enterprise that also has talented individuals from all over the world. All over the world. So that's the formula. When we come across cases of someone having difficulty, let's try and help. So I'd like your information later on. Let's try and help you. See where you go. we can find you an opportunity. Is there some additional training required or some job that hasn't yet found you? We are, as long as we run an economy that's competitive and our unemployment is low, there shouldn't be a problem. You'll be able to find a job. So that's our approach. Don't settle this as a, don't try and approach this as a theological matter. Address it as a practical matter, but be clear that our objective is to help Singaporeans and to nurture Singaporeans so they can rise in seniority and responsibility in each sector of the economy. We made our position very clear in the Ministry of Manpower. We have a bias, and it's a bias towards Singaporeans, but we don't want to shoot ourselves in the foot. <laughs>